polyphenol, they have the ability, if they get into your body, to change the expression of your genes. That's a pretty powerful statement, that I can put a piece of food in my mouth and I can change which genes are turned off and turned on by that food. Welcome to the Wellness Zone Podcast. I'm Mary Perry, and I'm here with Dr. Barry Sears. This week, we're diving into the topic of polyphenols. And for those of you who are familiar with the zone, this is not a new term for you. But for those of you who aren't, we're going to talk a bit about what they are and why they're so important for your health. So Dr. Sears, can you tell our listeners what exactly polyphenols are? Well, polyphenols are chemicals that give fruits and vegetables their color. And they say, well, that's nice. But what do they do? Well, they do quite a bit, but they aren't very concentrated in fruits and vegetables. It means you have to eat a lot of them to get any benefits, and there lies the problem. People don't like to eat that many fruits and vegetables. So again, they're a critical component. I believe they're actually essential nutrients, and therefore, if you don't get enough of them, bad things happen. And Dr. Sears, just to give people an overview, when we talk about recommendations for fruits and vegetables, people are supposed to be consuming anywhere from five to 10 servings a day, but the likelihood is really that we're consuming one to two and potatoes tend to be the, the <laughs> vegetable most consumed, which has no polyphenols or and minimal. And there lies the problem. If I said before, they're essential nutrients, and if we don't consume enough, our metabolism will suffer. Mm-hmm. So the question is, why are they really important for human health? Uh, the fact is, They have the ability, if they get into your body, to change the expression of your genes. That's a pretty powerful statement, that I can put a piece of food in my mouth and I can change which genes are turned off and turned on by that food. Uh, How they do that, they activate AMPK, the master regulator of metabolism. But that's only true if they get in the body. And there lies the big problems about polyphenols and how much do I have to consume. So let's dive a little bit into absorption, um, just piggybacking on what you just said. Why are they so poorly absorbed? Well, first of all, if, when they're found in fruits and vegetables, they're usually found in very long polymers. Mm-hmm. Those are not going to get in the body. So the polymers have to be broken down by microbes in our gut into monomers, smaller particles. Uh, so if those microbes aren't in the gut, you're going nowhere. But that's only step one. Step two, there are other microbes in the gut that have to now break down those monomers into smaller fragments that can be absorbed. So again, just putting the polyphenols in your mouth is only the first step of a multi-step reaction to hopefully get those polyphenols into the body where they can turn on A and PK. So are there any polyphenols that are absorbed intact or are they all these long polymers? Well, there are certain ones. Uh, one, if we go, when you go get extra virgin olive oil, not the cheap stuff, the really expensive stuff. That contains small fragments of polyphenols that are absorbed, that, but they have a bitter taste. That's why it has a little kick to it. But that's all the health benefits of olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, are coming from the polyphenols, not the olive oil itself. So if they are absorbed into your body, what kind of health benefits will you, will you see? Well, once you activate AMPK, you see a lot of health benefits. Uh, Primarily, uh, you're looking to increase the release or uh, activation of antioxidative enzymes. That's why I say, oh, polyphenols reduce free radicals. Indirectly, they do. They reduce it if they get in the body to activate AMPK to make a gene transcription factor that tells the body, make more antioxidative enzymes. And these are millions of times more powerful than any supplement in terms of reducing free radicals. They also help turn down the levels of inflammation. So they do a lot of things if they get in the body. So are there differences between the types of polyphenols or the sources? Well, the sources are the same, but the differences are in the concentration. Let's look at foods, things Mm -hmm. like fruits and vegetables. Uh, Vegetables, maybe one-tenth of one percent of their weight will be polyphenols. Not very much. Fruits a little higher, maybe two-tenths of one percent. Still not very much. Now, can you get them more concentrate? Yes. That's what you call a concentrate. What's a concentrate? You basically have frozen the fruits and vegetables and basically freeze dried them to basically remove the water. Okay, that might increase the levels of the polyphenols from maybe one tenth of one percent to maybe, you know, five times that, maybe half of one percent. Still not much. 
So when you buy these things, little capsules of saying freeze dried uh, fruits and vegetables, uh, you're really wasting your money. Now, <laughs> can you find other sources other than fruits and vegetables that are rich in polyphenols? The answer is yes, spices. Spices contain about 5% of their weight as polyphenols. Now, that's a problem. Polyphenols taste very bitter. Now, have you ever taken a spice and basically put maybe a, a teaspoon in your mouth? It's quite bitter. <laughs> and you go, pooey, pooey. So, so, well, I, what happened? The spice, the spice tastes so good in my food, it's being diluted out. But the spice itself is very rich in polyphenols. Now, can you go still higher? Yes, these are called extracts. You now take the basically the freeze-dried material and extract it mm -hmm. with organic solvents. The polyphenols, because they're somewhat water-soluble, will be extracted into the alcohol phase, and you can concentrate that up. And now you can increase the levels of the polyphenols from maybe uh, a half a percent to maybe five, maybe six percent. Now, the final aspect is making uh, what I call isolates. You use specialized techniques to now take the... Uh, the uh, extracts and isolate certain fractions which are much richer in the polyphenols. Now you can get up to maybe 30% by weight of polyphenols. So you can see it's saying, yeah, these isolates seem like a much easier format to get enough polyphenols to activate AMPK to do all the good things they're supposed to. Mm -hmm. And the one thing too is that as you're isolating these products, you're also removing the sugar, so you can get more than if you were just to consume, you know, fruits and vegetables alone. Well, especially the sugars and fruits. You know, uh, vegetables. No one says, "Boy, that that was a really a tasty vegetable." <laughs> True. Now, now fruits, uh, they do a different aspect. They basically reduce the taste, the bitterness of the polyphenols by surrounding them with sugars, and say, "Well, that was a really tasty treat." Now, the problem is, what's your goal? To activate AMPK. And those simple sugars in the fruits deactivate AMPK. So when you're getting your polyphenols from uh, fruits, you're taking one step forward and a half a step back. So, so geez, you know, you're making life too tough. Uh, but again, they are bitter. But that's why the standpoint, you still need enough to get a therapeutic dose I mean, enough to turn on AMPK to do all those good things to reduce oxidation and to reduce inflammation. So one of the things you've always said, Dr. Sears, is there's 8,000 polyphenols that exist. So in terms of the isolates, what do you consider the best isolates that are out there? Well, the two best isolates out there uh, are really two. One is an isolate of the maki berry, and the other one is an isolate of cocoa. Now, if you take, let's say, a baker's chocolate, which is kind of a 5% polyphenols, and put some baker's chocolate in your mouth, Super what's your better. first response? Pooey, pooey, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> very bitter. And, but you can basically make a, a nice wood of baker's chocolate that's about 30%. Well, that you're basically probably not going to put in the food products, but you will put into a capsule. So mm -hmm. again, you, you can get the higher, con but again, you need an, a therapeutic dose to get a therapeutic effect. Mm -hmm. And so how much do you need per day uh, to really see a health benefit of the isolates? Well, I think you're going to need uh, probably about one to two grams of the uh, make, the uh, polyphenols coming from the isolates. Mm -hmm. Now, from the standpoint, if I want to basically use less, like the, um, uh, the concentrates, I might need five to 10 grams and say, that's a lot of these extracts. Say, right, but that's a therapeutic dose. And how long do I have to take this therapeutic dose? the rest of your life. And one of the things you and I have talked about a lot is really the half-life of polyphenols is only two to three hours maybe in the blood. So it really does require a steady supply throughout the day, whether it's coming from your diet or supplementation or these isolates. Well, and that's one of the things we've done, you know, that, you know, remember that one of the problems of concentrating things up, you may also be concentrating bad things up at the same time. This mm -hmm. is the problem with uh, cocoa. I say I can concentrate cocoa up but I'm also concentrating up cadmium. So if I, as I concentrate, I say, oh, oh no, this is not a good thing. Cadmium's not good for our body. It might be good for your, um, you know, you know, fender for your car, but not for your body. So now, so what you'd like to do is now go an extra step to make sure they're suitable for food grade. It's called grass status, generally regarded as safe. You have to go through a lot of toxicology to demonstrate that now your isolates are suitable for human consumption. Now, what does that mean? You can put them in the food products. It makes it much easier to consume these isolates 
if they're in food products as opposed to capsules. And I know you've uh, worked really hard to get your polyphenol products, the grass status that they need to be incorporated into both supplement form and also into the food products. So well, the food products are the key one because that makes it easy to comply. Mm -hmm. And therefore, to make it easier to apply to getting adequate levels of polyphenols, your life's going to be a lot better. Mm -hmm. Now, to do that, you have to put some work into it. And most people say, oh, that's too much effort. We'll just kind of fool the customer. We'll tell them, <laughs> say, buy our stuff. And we have 85 million five-star reviews. Say, whatever. <laughs> but the reality is the only two products that have significant human data behind it are these isolates of cocoa and isolates of the maki bear. And how do you know if they're working? Well, that's a good question. Say, I think I'm feeling better. That's not science. <laughs> what do you want to do? The blood will tell you. There's one marker of oxidative stress. It's called isoprostanes. It's a little complicated test, but it tells you, are the levels of oxidation products in the blood going down? If they're going down, they're working. But another test will give you an indirect answer is a glycosylated hemoglobin. This is really a marker of diabetes, but also a marker of reducing oxidative stress in the blood. So that becomes a very good marker. If my levels of glycosylated hemoglobin are going down in the blood, the polyphenols are working. You're taking the right amount. Now, just do that the rest of your life. And Dr. Sears, one of the known benefits of polyphenols, in addition to everything you just explained on AMPK, is that they're not only anti-inflammatory, but they also have an antioxidant effect. So is there a role for polyphenols uh, in anti-aging? The answer is yes. Uh, but only if you get enough. Because again, when we talk about anti-aging at the uh, really the genetic level and the, really the molecular level, it's activating AMPK. Anything that activates AMPK will slow down the aging process. Now you see all these anti-aging companies say, my magic capsule will basically slow down aging. Then you basically look at the ingredients and the amounts of them and you say, no way. Uh, so the fact is, yes, at a therapeutic dose, they can be useful in slowing down the aging process. But in terms of when we talk about slowing the aging process, we're really looking to activate AMPK. A more powerful approach is taking adequate levels of omega-3 fatty acids. A still more powerful approach is restricting calories for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Now, if you combine all three of those together, now you've got a very powerful tool to basically slow down the aging process. We call it metabolic engineering. So there's no magic bullet in uh, reducing uh, the rate of aging, but there is a really a magic formula if you can maintain it from day to day for the rest of your life.